Welcome to day 1,280 of What's Shift to Now. Sharon Hornell from here, documenting the journey as I transitioned from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. I spent 47, going on 48, probably 48 by now, years in different businesses and industries, like 27 different ones offline, and over a quarter century of that in corporate America simultaneously. Then, after my divorce, yep, got divorced, maybe worked a little too much and that negatively impacted my relationship and my marriage. That's my piece of responsibility for that. Uh, and then had an opportunity to say, okay, well, what am I gonna do now? I'm older, I don't wanna go back to the things that I've done in the past necessarily, but I don't wanna just be done and you know, sit in a chair and read books and walk on the beach and retire yet. I got more to share, more to do, more I'm interested in. So I've always been curious about the internet, the World Wide Web and the online world. When the internet started, I was in both corporate America and running a business on the side. I think I just had one business back then. But uh, was curious about the internet. I knew that it meant something for our futures, but I didn't know what. Like many, many people in the early days of the internet, I as a science and engineer found it fascinating, science, scientist and engineer, and um, business person found it fascinating, but wasn't sure where it was gonna go. Nobody, I don't think, predicted back in the beginning of the internet what the internet would have become today and, it, and will continue to be in the future, uh, especially with COVID-19. COVID-19 gave a huge shot in the arm, even whether people took the vaccine or not, literally of many, many industries, anything remote or online or, uh, that could automate processes so that people didn't have to do in-person things has just skyrocketed over the last year, year and a half. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I personally think it's, it's awesome and I'm glad I got involved in the online world when I did. Um, of course, I share here the things that work, the things that haven't worked, the things I continue to do, the things I've stopped doing. Um, any questions about that, just ask. You can direct message me on Facebook Live or on Facebook itself on this video or you can ask in the comments below so everybody can benefit from the question because chances are, if you have a question about something, I guarantee, if whatever you have a question about in the world, I finally learned, whatever I have a question about in the world, whatever we have a question about ever, there's always probably thousands, if not millions of people that have the exact same question. Just, they're afraid to ask or nobody asks. Nowadays, whenever I have a question, I almost immediately stick it in Google and or ask Google with my voice activation because, or some other search engine or YouTube because there's almost always information or an answer out there. Now I might have to go through 10 or 11 answers to find what really works for me, but it's available. The information is available at our fingertips like never before. So there's really no excuses to be stuck or stop or not doing something. And if you don't have somebody to ask, if you Googled it, if you looked, if you tried to find an answer and you still are struggling, or you got an answer and you're like, God, I'm really pushing against this, I'm really resisting it, it's probably not the right answer for you, go ahead and ask. I don't know that I'll have the answer, but I guarantee I can help you find your next step so that you don't feel stuck, you don't know what to do. Whether it's a resource, a person, a place, a thing, I, I guarantee I can connect you with that. So what am I working on? Death and Go Challenge number eight started today. I just finished the video with my little uh, cow egg timer or my cow timer. It's actually an hour timer. But I said I would commit it to 10 minutes or less per video this time. Now, doesn't mean I won't add bonus videos, but the lesson, the daily action item, the tool, and the lesson have to be done in 10 minutes or less. Why? Because that's kind of a challenge for me. Because sometimes I like to talk for 20 minutes instead of 10. Sometimes I've got stories and experiences and things that I think people can relate to that I wanna share and there's just uh, only so much I can do in 10 minutes. So I actually got the timer out this time and I, I stole it from the stove and I'm gonna use it every get up and go challenge. I'm not gonna use it for my other videos but I'm gonna stick with 10 minutes on the get up and go challenge. So I did the first one today. I, I was gonna do it live at 11, because it's Sunday and I don't have my granddaughter, but I thought I can't necessarily get on at 11 without any background noise or cute little blondes popping in. So I wanna do it in the morning. I'll probably still pre-record it in the morning and then I think I will hop on live at 11 to answer questions, clarify, um, share some more examples or do whatever people need. 
I will probably record those, maybe. Haven't decided yet. Depends if I do them uh, as Facebook Lives or Zooms or whatever works. We'll have to figure out a way that works. I kind of want to do some Zooms because I like to have the interaction where I can actually see people and we can see one another and it helps me to, to answer their questions and get to the bottom of what really needs to happen more quickly and easily. And I'm all about simpler, quicker, and easier solutions these days. I think the older I get, the less complicated I want things in my life to be. Now, maybe I should start by you know, decluttering my background. But I like my little friends. Every one of them has a story that, that makes me feel good and reminds me of something. So I like to be surrounded by my stuffed friends. And during COVID, when we weren't seeing hardly anybody, it was it was part of why I got the, the cluttery little friends out of boxes. All right, I digress. So get up and go challenge. Day one today was just a welcome and an overview and a, a quick 10 minutes here, this is what's expected. I'm gonna give you a tool every day and the tool today was pencil and paper, or pens and papers, or something to write on, something to write with. Not that you have to take a ton of notes or will wanna take a ton of notes, but I want people to capture what's important to them. One thing I've learned to do, and I used to be a person that captured as much as I could and, and wrote down just about everything. And I've learned that as my vision has deteriorated, I have some vision challenges, uh, I write down notes still because it reinforces it in my memory, not because I'm going to go back and read them. And the truth is, in 50 years of note taking, probably longer, uh, very seldom have I gone back and used or reviewed my notes. I've got a stack this high of previous challenge notebooks that I've used and done. And I notice that my notebooks are getting thinner and thinner as I do the challenge more because I'm perfecting the process and I'm perfecting what needs to be included because it really helps people get the, the thing we're talking about and what doesn't need to be included. What keeps it simple? How can we simplify this process? How can we take this tool and make it 10 times more effective but a lot simpler? So I'm doing that every time we go through the challenge. So at the eighth time through it, we didn't even do tools. The first one, two, three, probably four challenges, I, I used tools on myself and in the background, but I didn't even think to incorporate them. So I think about challenge five, we started adding a tool or tools along the way. And then it was maybe August of last year was the first time, might have been October. I don't remember. I have to look through my notes, but uh, it was the fall for sure before we actually said, I've, I've got like hundreds of tools that I've used throughout my life. I'm going to at least share one a day that ties into the thing that we're doing because it makes it so much easier to understand, learn, and actually do the thing. And the, the power of everything we hear and learn and read and see is what we do with it, what it means to us, and then do we actually take action or do something with it? Because if we don't do it, if we don't try it, if we don't try the tool or use it, it we're not going to remember it. We're definitely not going to remember it. We can go back and we can say, oh, I remember there was a tool during this challenge, and I don't have disappearing content, so people can always go back and see it, but they'd have to go back and remember what it was called and search the group and join the group and find the video and watch the video again when if you just write down a couple of things that will help you remember it you never have to go back and do all that and it's a lot more time consuming to go back and find the video and re-listen to it and re-watch it than to just have taken notes of what's important to you as you go through now the cool thing about learning things like reading books and things like that there's certain books that i've gone back and read over and over and over again because every time i read them I get new things out of them, new new learnings, new lessons, because every time I read them, I'm actually a different version of myself than when I read them the, the last time. The th same is true whenever you go back and rewatch a training or rewatch something. I am, I'm one of those people, and you may or may not be, I don't like to go back and reread books or rewatch movies, unless it's a movie I absolutely love. I don't really watch it over and over and over again, uh, usually once and then I'm done. And I kind of get annoyed if I, I will pick a movie on Netflix or something. And I'll get like a couple minutes into it. I'm like, oh, I already watched this. And I had gotten all excited about it, but totally forgot that I watched it. And then a few minutes in, I'm like, oh, I've already seen this. I don't want to watch it. Because as soon as I realize I've already seen it, the whole plot plays out in my memory. And I'm like, all right, done. Uh, so I, I'm, super, I'm always super excited to do the Get Up and Go Challenge. I haven't done it since... April, which is a really long time for me, but I was traveling in the summer, has been really busy, and after last summer with uh, 
COVID-19 and everything, when I did do the challenge, I did a 45-day one between June and into July. I did a 45-plus day. I think that was the April, June, July, August, April, June, July, August, October, December, February, April this year, and then August again. So this is our eighth 30-plus day challenge. Did some smaller challenges in there, but the 30-day one is because... You know, you can get anybody to do a five-day challenge or a three-day challenge or a 10-day challenge even. And keep in mind that 10-day challenges are maybe three days of content or three and a half days of content. And all the rest is marketing and sales and and the the whole marketing and sales process. It's the testimonials. It's the, the guest speakers that come on, which are really just testimonials. And that that's great as a marketing thing. But... The get up and go challenge, the purpose of that is to help people to literally take the change and challenge process and install it in their subconscious to guarantee they'll get better results automatically whenever they're faced with a change or a challenge or a setback or a failure or a roadblock or an obstacle or a problem in the future so that they're guaranteed to get better results for themselves than if they keep doing what they're doing and they, they didn't have the process or or make the process their own at all. So 30 days, and I do not ascribe to the 21 days to make a habit thing. I think that came from the motivational speaker circuit and the personal development secret, and it's not founded in science any more than all the information we do or do not get about COVID. So instead of, of, of believing that like everyone else, because I've tested it on myself. Some things, it takes less than 21 days to form a habit for me. Other things, it takes a heck of a lot longer to form a habit. I wanted to give up diet pop. I was a, before my sudden cardiac arrest, I was an absolute positive diet pop and coffee and caffeine a haul, like if there is such a thing. I was totally addicted to coffee and diet soda. And so in August of 2010, August 1st, actually August seems to be my month for transformation and change. August 2010, I gave up diet soda and coffee cold turkey. Now it's interesting to note that just over a month later, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and died, but that had nothing to do with, with all of the formaldehyde I'd been consuming or the coffee for, for years. It was totally unrelated, but it, it's a funny coincidence. So I went cold turkey on that, but it took me at least seven years of, of not having diet pop before I really was like, nah, I didn't, I didn't even think it was the, it was seven years into it before I had a day where I didn't think about wanting a diet soda. That's how addicting some of the things that we have, some of the habits we have are in our life. They can they can hold on to us for years. Uh, so the whole 21 day thing, yeah, good for good for whoever started that. I and I could look that up. I can't remember what motivational speaker said it first. I want to say I don't think it was Jim Rohn. One of those guys, it was that generation of motivational speakers that came up with it. And it's stuck because one thought, oh my God, that's a great idea. Now I can get people to buy my 21 day program or, or my month long program or whatever. But uh, I say 30 days because 30 days is the amount of time that I can quickly and easily break it down, install it, in, and, and I did it to myself first, of course, install it into my subconscious and get the results that I want for anybody. And that gives us an opportunity to try it out in the nine different areas and aspects of our life so we can make sure everybody has a, well, how would this fit for my relationships how would this fit for my spiritual beliefs how would this fit for my uh, physical well-being so I want to prove to people that you can use it for anything it works for everything if you've got a challenge or a, a thought that you don't think that this automatic process would work for I challenge you to share it with me in the comments below and I will use it as an example in the upcoming in this month's challenge because I love getting challenges from other people I've already I know how to do my own, but it's more fun to help people do theirs. All right. Well, it's, it's more fun to do mine. I'll be honest. I, I, don't, I always want to, you know, deal with situations that end up putting me in the best light, best situation, right? We all do. So get up and go challenge today. Our idiom today was once and for all. Let's deal with challenges once and for all. And that's really what we're doing with the 30-day get up and go challenge. We are dealing with changes and challenges once and for all. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to have any of these things in our future. One thing I can guarantee you will have for the rest of your life are 
changes and challenges. I can guarantee that to absolutely everybody on the planet. Guarantee things are going to change. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have setbacks, adversities, roadblocks, obstacles, problems, failures, whatever you call it. You're going to have those in your life. You're going to have good ones and bad ones as defined by you. Guarantee it. I can guarantee everybody's going to have those, including me. We're going to always have problems. When we solve a problem, it creates another problem. When we have, we, when we implement a solution, it creates another challenge or problem or change for ourselves and everybody else that we, we help with that. Uh, so we want to install the process that will handle this and make it once and for all not a negative thing. Uh, we want to make it an automatic, as automatic as breathing or blinking or hiccuping or sneezing. We want it to be an automatic response to outside stimuli, right? Something gets in your nose, you sneeze. A change or challenge comes your way, it automatically runs through the process, the SOAP framework, we call it, in the Get Up and Go Challenge. The SOAP framework on your subconscious level runs through it, pops out the best solution, the best response for you. You do that, you move on, and guess what? Then there's going to be another one that pops up. Handled automatic, and then you move on. So that's the whole purpose of the Get Up and Go Challenge. And uh, why, why am I doing it? I guess I'll talk about that in the challenge, but I do it because I needed to make sure that I kept moving during the COVID pandemic and that I kept moving forward and moving toward my goals and objectives and the things that I want. And we have to always do that. But COVID was a huge reminder on a global scale that we need to do that. And, and most people, including me, who I think I was pretty well equipped, were not very well equipped to handle little day-to-day -day changes, much less global changes. But the global change is a great way to have everybody on the same page and relate to, oh, maybe we do need to, to look at this and have a way to handle this that works all the time, every time on a subconscious level, so we don't even have to think about it anymore. Because guess what? There's always going to be plenty of things for us to deal with and, and think about. So if we can automate some of those processes and off them to our subconscious, heck yeah, sign me up. All right. Our... Uh, an, our annual challenge this year is to do one thing every day that centers us to get to know ourselves better, what makes us tick. And it was a kind of weird one today from Walt Whitman, who, you know, some authors we can relate to, others not so much. It was about characters, movements, or growths that you gather when you're going about your day and on the streets. So uh, I will do that when I go for my walk today. I will look around and observe, which I do all the time, unless I've got something big on my mind that I'm planning or, or mapping out. Uh, I like to just engage and, and watch people and what's going on uh, when I go for my walks. People when I'm in town, nature of course, and animals and mushrooms and flowers and birds and beautiful things in nature when I am out in nature or out in the, the wilderness parts of my walks and the places I like to go. So those are the things I'm working on. Uh, after the challenge, may do another summit this fall or maybe another women's summit this fall i've had some people ask about that so if that's something that would be interesting to you women's business summit because i work with women in business uh, if that's something that would be of interest to you share in the comments below otherwise i will be with you tomorrow to let you know what's going on how the get up and go challenge is going what we're working on what we're learning and uh, what i'm doing in the other areas and aspects of my life obviously challenges are my thing since i'm doing three of them simultaneously right now even though the daily uh, idiom isn't really a challenge since I do it every day and we're going on we're over a thousand days kind of feels like it's a daily challenge so and it is a challenge it's just a challenge for me to figure out okay how does this expression what it means where did it come from how does that fit to growing and building and supersizing our business so that's a little personal challenge that I like to share with other people as well all right that's it if I can help you anyway ask otherwise I will be with you tomorrow bye you'll notice I didn't set the egg timer for this one have a great day